What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create this light star design. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below. You can grab the canvas size as well as a free star stamp that I've created for you and of course the palette. Now just as a quick note before you do crack on with the rest of the tutorial, uh, my camera tends to look a little bit yellow through the little bit of this filming. So it's actually a little bit warmer than it appears and I actually am just going to keep my star on the left hand side the entire time so you can see the color tones that I've used and gone for. So just bear that in mind that the video may look a little bit more yellow rather than the more orangey tones that I've actually got. And if you didn't already know, I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel, so hit the subscribe button. But if you want even more tutorials from me, I post three more every single month over on my Patreon. If you wanna get access to that catalog of over 70 tutorials, hit the link in the description down below. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created today's canvas, we're going to go straight up to our layers. We're going to change our background color and in the palette, we're going to use this color here in the bottom right. Once you've grabbed that, we'll then go ahead and create the star. Now for the star, we're first of all going to go ahead and create the outline and I've created a stamp for this. So for you, you're going to need to go to your brush library and it will be under imported right at the very bottom. I've got it in my collection of brushes here and I've got the star stamp. The size is maxed out at 100% and the color that we need for today is gonna to wanna to be this color here. It is the middle color in that first column. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tap in the middle of the screen, right in the middle, because it'll be fairly large. Now you might not be able to see that, so what I recommend you do is, if you actually turn off your background color for a minute, you'll be able to see the star. And if we grab our cursor, we make sure snapping in the bottom left is turned on. We can go ahead and position this using the orange lines there to make sure it's nice and perfectly in the center of our canvas. And if we tap on our cursor when we're done, we're then gonna go ahead and go to the layer. We're gonna tap on it and we're gonna use the reference tool. So we're gonna to tap on it and use the option of reference, which basically now every other layer that we create is gonna look at that one as a guide. And if we create a new layer and drag it underneath our outline, we go to our colors. We go ahead and we grab this color here at the top of the first column. Then we drag that color into the center. We've now filled in that area because it used the layer that's a reference as a guide even though there's nothing on this one. And if we tap on that layer above now, we can tap on it and turn off the reference. And we'll carry on for a moment, just creating the basic shapes before we bring in our background color. So we're gonna go ahead and with the outline, we're gonna swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two, we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and we're gonna grab the bottom color in the first column. We're gonna drag it into that outline area and let go. Now you won't see any visual change, but if we take a look at our layers, We've actually got a golden one underneath. And if we now go to our cursor, we make sure uniform is selected, again, snapping turned on. We can go ahead and we can just scale this down in size a little bit, and we can move it into the center of our star. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a thick outline underneath here that makes this look 3D, and then an inner sort of area here as well to the star. And if we actually reduce that down even smaller, we can create a little bit more depth the only thing you kind of want to do is make sure at the bottom that the points are kind of touching and that way we can create a really deep effect in the star, like it's leaning back slightly at the top. Tap on your cursor when you're done. So now we've done that, you can actually see we've got these pointy ends, so we need to do some alignment to make it fit the body of the star. So we're going to go ahead and go up to our selection tool. We're going to use the option of freehand and color fill. Color fill needs to be turned on so it will look like this, it will be blue. And we're going to zoom in. And we're going to simply tap in this corner here, tap on this corner here, then tap over here and create a triangle and tap on your first point and it'll fill it in. Here, where we have this horizontal-ish part, we're going to go ahead and tap four times to create a little box and then tap on your first point there to fill it in. Here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to link these two corners here to one another. You may have to do more lines, but as long as you just create a straight line here from point to point and then go round, tap on your first dot so it fills in. Here at the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and draw in point to point, as we just said, and then I'm just gonna make my way around, tap on that first dot. If we zoom out, we take a look at the rest of the star. We need to reflect all that on the opposite side. So again, at the bottom, we'll just quickly connect those together. In the inner area here, towards the middle, we're gonna go ahead and link them up. Here, we're gonna create that little rectangle shape. 
and on the outside, we're going to go ahead and connect the two points together and tap on your dot when you're done. Now taking a look around, should have filled in all the gaps that we need to, and now you've got this really cool 3D star. And at this point, we can then go ahead and bring in our background color as well. So next, let's go ahead and move into creating the first light bulb. So we're going to turn off all of our star layers, all three of them. We'll come back to them in a moment. We're going to create two new layers. Swipe from left to right on both layers and group them together. And that group there, we're just going to rename it and we'll call it bulb. Then on the bottom layer out of the two, we're going to zoom out of our canvas just a little bit. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab the top color in the second column. We're going to go to our brush and we're going to go to calligraphy, the monoline brush. The size doesn't really matter. I'm going to make it max so that you can see it. And we're going to simply draw in a circle. Hold your pen at the end. Pop your finger on the screen. Make sure your circle fits within the boundary, of course, of our canvas. And grab your cursor if you want to and just position it in the center, hitting those orange lines. Just to let you know, no, no, everything's nice and organized. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Then we're going to drag the color into the center. We're going to go to our eraser, tapping on our eraser. We're going to go to airbrushing and the soft brush. We can keep the opacity a little bit lower, maybe about 80%, and we're going to increase the size. We want it to be fairly large, maybe not that large, maybe around about 32. And we're going to go ahead and in a circular motion, just get rid of the center and go round and round and round until the outside edge is going to be quite faint, but we've got a little bit of a uh, solid shape there. So a little something like this, you may want to just, just glance over them a few times just to erase a little bit, and maybe you can get rid of a corner or two, so like the top right and bottom left. I know it doesn't have corners, but you know what I mean. Top right, bottom left, and then leave the top edges. We can then go ahead and on the next layer above, we can create the light coil in the center. So we're going to go ahead and on this empty layer, we're going to go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here, the middle color in the second column. Now the brush size wants to be set to 100% with the monoline brush. And we're going to create just a simple coil that's going to sit in the middle. So we're just going to create like loop-de-loops and then we can adjust it afterwards if needs be. Now one thing I am going to do is if we go up to our brush and we tap on the monoline brush and we go to stabilization, I'm just going to increase the streamline up to max and I'm going to increase the st stabilization up to around about 45%. That way we can get some really smooth lines. So starting over here on the left, we're just going to go ahead and create a bit of a straight line in and then some loops and then just let that run out a little bit. Something like this. Just something pretty simple. We don't have to worry about it too much. It's going to be very, very tiny in the end anyway. The only thing we want to do is just then grab our cursor and make sure it's nicely positioned in the center. Again, hitting those orange lines and we can scale this down in size as well. And we can position that a little closer to this sort of scale. So I'm going to try and hit the points just to let me know I'm nice and organized tap on my cursor when I'm done. Next, let's go ahead and go to our layers. We're going to swipe that layer to the left and duplicate it and change the blend mode from normal and we'll change it to add. Now we're going to go to our adjustments. We're going to go to Gaussian blur and we're going to give this a nice big blur. So we're going to go up to something around about sort of 27%. If not slightly bigger, we could probably make this one a nice big glow. It's about 33. Then we'll go back to the layer again for the actual coil. Swipe back to the left again and duplicate it and change the blend mode again from normal to the option of add. And again, we'll go up to our Gaussian blur. We'll swipe from left to right, and we'll give this one a bit more of a glow that's a little bit tighter this time. So we're gonna go up to something maybe around about sort of uh, 14 or 15%, something around that mark. I'm gonna go to 14. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and go to the layer, swipe back to the left and duplicate it as well. Just make it nice and bright. So we've got a little something like this. Now this is going to be the foundation of our light bulb. So we're actually going to go ahead and go to the bulb group. We can collapse it down. We can tap on it and use the option flatten, which will go ahead and just compress that all into one layer for us. Then we can go ahead and bring in our star layers underneath. And now we can get to work on positioning our star where we need it. So we're going to go ahead and grab our cursor. We're going to scale this down in size. This is where I mentioned about the coil. It's not too much of a big deal. We're just going to bring that down in size quite a bit and we're going to position it something like this. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than I need to for the moment and we're going to position it in the center of our star. So something around about here and we want to be able to duplicate it two more times and fit that in. And that's why I'm not too fussed about the size for a moment. So I'm going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it, grab my cursor, move that up into here, grab my layer again. 
swap it to the left and duplicate it and move that one up using the cursor yet again into this space here. So now I'm just trying to make sure that we didn't make it too big or too small and it does have enough size that we can fit it into those gaps. And we're gonna to have to do the same round here so it still may change again. So we're gonna to go to the middle bulb here, swipe it to the left and duplicate it and repeat. So we're gonna move over to here and it runs just into that gap there. So we're just gonna let that run through that line. Go to the layer again, swipe that to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor, move that into this gap here as well. Now, based on perspective, it actually needs to be a bit closer to the bottom line than it is sort of these top areas. It's happening on my cursor when I'm done. I just need to make sure they're in a straight line and I'll just grab that middle one, grab my cursor and I'll just tap a few times just to move it into position so it runs nice and organized straight through. Now I can actually go ahead and grab these two layers so I can, for example, move my star across. I can grab both of those pinch them into one layer, swipe them to the left and duplicate it, and then I can grab my cursor, flip it horizontally and move it across. Don't worry if you don't want to do that step, all you need to do is just make sure you do the same thing all the way around. So we're just making sure our stars, our uh, little bulbs go all the way around our star. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And then we've just got these two down here to do. So we go back to our main bulb in the center, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Don't worry about your layers, we'll merge them all in together in a second. We'll grab our cursor, move this one down. And again, it needs to run into this sort of line territory. Go to our layer for that, swipe it to the left and duplicate it and grab our cursor and move it down into the gap. Now we wanna make sure the gap's a little bit consistent with all the rest of them. This one here looks a little bit too far from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just Go back, make that minor adjustment to bring that up into here. Take a look at that. I'll move it again, just one or two pixels across, just so that that line looks pretty good, nice and even. And again, I'll go ahead and find both these two bulbs. So this one here, and I believe it's actually this one here. We'll pinch them together, swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it, grab my cursor and flip it horizontal. Move it perfectly across and you'll see those three blue lines which lets me know that I've moved that nice and perfectly across. And I'll tap on my cursor when I'm done. And we now have all of our bulbs in place. And as I mentioned, we can save on our layers by pinching all of the bulbs into one layer. Now we're gonna go ahead and swipe that to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out of the two, we're gonna go ahead and just grab our cursor. We're gonna just scale this down in size just a tiny bit and move it into a position where it's just downwards a little bit. This is almost like a reflection of the bulbs in the surface underneath. So I've scaled it down, just moved it down. And then I'll go back to my layer, I'll tap on it and I'll just lower the opacity down of that. And I'll bring that down to, let's drop it all the way down to about sort of 40% for a moment. And that'll just be a little bit of extra reflection. We can then go ahead now and start to really brighten these up quite a bit. So we can go to the layer above for the bulbs. We can swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We can go ahead and change the blend mode on this and change it to the option of add. And we can go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we can just blur this out a little bit. This will just give us a bit of a glow. So about sort of uh, about six to 8%, I'll go in the middle there at seven. Tap on my adjustments when I'm done. We're then gonna go to our layers again and we're gonna create another new layer. We'll go to our colors. We'll go ahead and we're gonna grab this bottom color here in the bottom of the second column with our brush set to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. Now the size is currently set to 15. That's pretty large, maybe around about nine, if not smaller than that. We could probably go down to about sort of seven. And if we go back to the layer and we make sure the blend mode is changed from normal to add, we're gonna very, very lightly just tap on a few bulbs and brighten them up with the warmest of the colors. So for example, I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna tap a few times just to bring that bulb to life and you'll see it really bright and compare to the rest of them. I'm gonna go ahead and just vary that up. So I'm gonna grab the second one up here. That will then give that one a nice warm glow. I'll go ahead and I'll do the bottom one down here. I'm just tapping a few times, just very, very lightly until it starts to really uh, turn on. I'll then do the second one here, I think. And we've got two other colors to bring in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it nice and light for a minute. I'll brighten that one up just a smidge. I'll go to my colors and I'm gonna grab the yellow just above it. So the second color in that second row or second column. 
I'll do the bottom right bulb here, making this one a bit more yellow. You can see the difference on your screen compared to the other one that we just added. I'll do the middle and make that one a little bit more yellow. I'll go ahead and over here, I'm going to do the second one. I'm going to try and vary them up and I'll do the top one up here. Now, if I go to my colors and I grab the top color in that column, we're going to go ahead and do the last of them. So I've got one here and this one's going to be more of a white light. And we'll do in here and we'll go ahead and do the outer one over here as well. So now we've got a nice variety of colors and they're going to really vary depending on how much pressure you add, but we've got some nice different temperatures in there and you can always change it. You can even lower sort of a uh, layer on top, should I say. For example, I'll grab the orange. I could layer that on top of a different one. I'm going back in there and just punching out this one here, making it a bit more orange. We don't want to go that bright too quickly. I'm just going to punch out some of the orange ones a bit more. Now we can actually go to the layer. We can swipe that to the left and we can duplicate it. And then we can go ahead and on the top one, we'll go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we'll just swipe from left to right to diffuse those lights just a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and diffuse them up to around about 25%. And that should just give you a little bit more brightness and then a nice big glow on the inside. Now feel free to then do one final extra layer if you wish in terms of adding those glows. So we can go ahead and change the blend mode to add again. And then this is where you want to just add your sort of final colors. So I've got that bright orange again. I've got my brush eye set to about 5%. I can get in here and just, you know, really brighten up a few bulbs if I want to, you know, just really give that center area a bit more love, brighten that up. The only thing you're going to have to do is just kind of remember where you put your colors. So I'm going to go to the yellow one now. And I know I put a bit of yellow here in the center. Uh, I believe I put a bit of yellow here too. I don't have to do all of them with this slightly brighter color. We can leave them if needs be. And I'm going to go back to the top color in that column. And I'm just going back over the sort of center points, trying to brighten up a few of them, give them a little bit of extra brightness. Now, to finish off the bulbs so we can progress onto the rest of it, we'll create one more new layer yet again. We'll go ahead and change the blend mode again from normal to the option of add. We're going to go to our colors. We'll start off with the orange again, just so we can do it in order from bottom to top. We're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go to the option of luminance, which will be cool for you. And we're going to use the flare. The size is going to be fairly small at around about sort of six, if not bigger than that. Maybe we can go up to about eight. And again, you can just very lightly just tap a flare. We are going to lower this opacity down of this layer. So if it looks a bit too bright for now, don't worry, we are going to lower it. So I'm going to go ahead and just tap in here, tap in my orange ones. I'm going to go to my colors and then grab the yellow, the middle color. And we'll tap again. And I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to tap on a few. I'm going to go to my white color here at the top of that column. And we'll introduce one over here. That one's nice and bright, but we'll try and tone down the pressure just a little bit. I'll add one in there. And I think that's fine. We won't add them on every single one. And as I mentioned, we'll just go to the layer. We'll tap on the blend mode there and just bring that down. I want those little flare lines, but we don't need to add any more sort of brightness to it. So I'm going to bring that down to about sort of 25%. And for me, that's a lovely little amount because we've got these little lines in here. If you feel like yours is a little bit too bright, the layer underneath that we created where we've just flushed out some extra color in the bulbs, just turn that off. It's down to your personal preference. Now I'm going to go ahead and select all of these layers here at the top above our star. We'll group them together and we'll collapse that group down just to keep our layers nice and tidy. Next, let's go ahead and the next layer is in fact the top layer and that is the darker outline. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer above it. Tap on it and clipping mask it. We're going to go to our colors. We'll grab the yellow in the middle of the uh, second column. We're going to go to our layer. Now we're going to go ahead and tap on it and use the option of drawing assist. Now we're going to go ahead and edit the drawing assist. So if we go to actions and the canvas tab, we're going to turn on the drawing guide and we're going to edit the drawing guide and we need the option here of symmetry and we want the option set to vertical and hit done when you're done. Now what that should allow us to do is if we do something on one side it will do it on the opposite side. Now we need to change our brush, we need to change it to airbrushing and the soft brush and the size we're going to want to be in control of it so maybe around about five if not four percent something around that mark and we're going to go ahead and add in some nice bright highlights. Now we're on the side that's facing us. It's not an inner wall of the actual um, the actual star itself. So here I'm going to go ahead and introduce a bit of lighting that's on this edge. I'm going to let it just sort of very lightly just fade down and then 
I've got because I've got a bulb here, it's going to brighten up that edge. I've got a bulb here as well, so that's going to brighten up the corner. So we're we're looking at the minute as to where our bulbs are. So we've got another bulb here that will just maybe add a little bit of colour. We've got a bulb here as well, so that goes up, hits this edge, and then just sort of blends out on either side. And you want to keep it nice and light, keep your pressure super gentle, just for a minute. Let that really nicely just blend out. We've got a bulb, of course, here. So we're going to go ahead and just brighten up this edge. And because this side is technically facing us, it shouldn't get too much light. This is just like a bit of bleed over light. We've got a bulb here too. So this is going to just brighten up that corner just a little bit. Another one here, but it's further away. So we just brighten it up just a tiny bit. And we've got this bulb here, which of course really does brighten up in this area. We're just blending that out, blending that out down into the corner. Likewise here, we're just going to blend this out on that top edge and let that just blend either way in towards the center. These bulbs here would technically just catch a tiny bit on here on the point. So we can add a little bit of brightness on there and blend that into the rest. And because we set the drawing assist, it's done it all the way around for us. Now we're going to go ahead and go to our colors. We're going to grab the orange at the bottom of that column. We're going to go back to our layers. We're going to create a new layer tap on it and clipping mask it also and change the blend mode from normal and change it to add. And we're going to go ahead and tap on the layer and we're going to use the drawing assist as well. So we don't have to do the work twice. Now we're going to go ahead and with a brush size set to about three or 2%, I'm going to make it actually about a large 2%. And we're going to add in a really beautiful crispy edge. And you can see I'm drawing inside the star rather than like on the actual line itself and just brightening that up and just letting that just blend out towards the top. So adding this lovely crispy edge and when you zoom out you'll have this awesome little bouncing highlight. We've got another star here of course so we're going to go ahead and just just maybe brighten up the corner just a tiny bit. Keep this one a little bit lighter because again these ones are a little bit further away but they would have a little bit of an effect. Again here so you're basically adding in a beautiful crispy edge here, this nice bright edge where you added in the majority of your highlights before. We'll do the same here as well. So we're going to introduce this crispy edge on here and then just let that fade out. And you can drag this little line if you want a little bit further. You can drag it like a little bit further down towards the corner here. I could just drag this out a tiny bit. Again, we've got a little bit of a light source here, so we'll just brighten up that corner just a tiny bit. And again, beautiful big light here. So we're going to introduce a nice edge here. Let that just run down, run down towards the corners. And again, nice crispy highlight on here too. Let that just run either edge. And again, because we used the drawing assist, it's done it on both sides. So it's now saved us a little bit of work to do it once and it's done it on both sides. If we now go to our layers, we're going to go down to the next part of the star, which is the inside walls there. We're going to create a new layer above it and tap on it and clipping mask it. We're going to go ahead and go to our colors. We're going to grab the yellow in the middle of the second column. And we're now going to introduce some highlights where the uh, bulbs are on these inner walls. Now, again, we want to go back to our layer, tap on it and use the drawing assist. We're going to make sure the brush size is about 2%. And we're going to try and make this look a bit like metal on the inside. So here, this is where the bulb is. I'm going to start to sort of draw down a little bit. And I'm going to then nicely sort of blend that out to the right. And then occasionally just add in like a little brighter line where it's kind of like chamfered metal almost. And then we're just going to blend this out towards the left and leaving like little gaps like that's going to be great. It's going to help the effect that I want to pull off. Now we do want to sort of show that this corner has a corner to it. So I'm just going to sort of draw down it. I'm going to kind of draw it in and then just blend that out to the left, but not to the right. That way we actually have a bit of a corner. And again, it's doing it on both sides for us. And you should start to see this sort of metal effect start to come to life. We've got a bulb here and based on the angle, we want to go ahead and really uh, point this one quite upwards now and Again, just sort of blend that out towards the top and blend it back down towards here as well. I'm going to undo that last one. And then over here, we only have to do the inside down here, for example. So again, we're going to kind of come at it from the sort of this angle here like this, and then just blend that out 
get nice and light, blend it out. And again, try and introduce like a little bright line here and there. We've got more of the lighting on these inner walls to do in a second, but this is just like our foundation for it, you know? Lovely stuff. And then you should have this awesome little effect coming together. Now on the same layer, we're actually gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here in the middle of the uh, first column. And we're gonna introduce some shadows in certain areas. So here, for example, I'm gonna just very, very, very lightly just blend in and then stop where the light isn't quite traveling into this corner. It's a little bit darker. Likewise, we'll zoom in down here. We'll blend into this gap here and just blend out just a little bit so we've got a little bit of a darker shadow in there and then at the top we will do the same we're going to go ahead and kind of draw in a bit of a straight line and then just blend that out on the left and the right and of course with the drawing assist will do it for us anyway but just a little bit of darkness in those corners and we also want to introduce a bit of darkness under here because this area is not really facing our light source at all so we're going to go ahead and especially towards the bottom i'm going to increase my brush size up to three percent now be careful what you draw right now may affect this area here. So I'm going to be super gentle and just blend out and I'm going to blend into a darker corner here and then just maybe let this middle area live a little bit more in the brightness, sort of brightness area. So a little something like that. And again, we want to do the same on the outside over here. I'm going to darken up this corner here, blend out, keeping it really nice and gentle and again, blend out from the outside inwards. So that way we keep the 3D effect, but these are nicely sort of in the shadows. Next, let's go to our layers, create one more new layer. We're gonna go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to add. We'll tap on the layer and we'll clipping mask it. And again, we'll also tap on the layer and drawing assist it. We'll go to our colors and we're gonna grab the orange at the bottom of that second column. And the brush wants to be set to about 2%. And we're gonna go ahead and just sort of beef up these highlights a bit more. So I'm gonna make the brush size around about 2%, but a smaller one. Look at the difference. Now, my screen is actually somewhat coming off a bit more yellow than it is the warmer colors here. So your colors may look like they vary. And what I'll do is I'll actually put my finished design now on the left-hand side, so you'll be able to see the actual final variation. But we're doing the same thing we were just doing a second ago. I'm just looking for my brighter spots there in the sort of metal lines that I created and just try and uh, brighten them up a bit more with this lovely big highlight and just really emphasize these brighter spots on the side here. Now you can make your brush eyes even smaller if you want, but it's gonna make things super fine. So just bear that in mind. If I zoom in down here, we're gonna do the same over here. We're just gonna brighten that up and then just create nice little sort of lines that run off from it, making it look nice and crispy, nice and metally. And you can even brighten up at the top as well just under here where it meets that top line and we'll do the same up here we'll just go ahead and just brighten up at the top here just to sort of uh, blend together those two edges a bit more we also need to do up in here as well so we're just going to follow the same direction that we were working with blend outwards blend outwards there we go, we should have this beautiful crispy look. The only thing I then also want to do is if we reduce our brush size down to 1%, this corner that we spoke about earlier, I'm going to go ahead and just try and run in a straight line, pop my finger, well hold my pen, should I say, at the end, and just create a bit of a straighter edge there. I'll get rid of that little dot that I made by accident, and we'll just sort of blend out a bit more towards the left-hand side. And that should just give us a bit more of a crispy edge on the inside. And now it's just about creating the rest of the scene. You could leave it like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to my layers. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the star at the bottom and create a new layer. I'm gonna bring that layer underneath that dark star at the bottom. I'm gonna to go to my colors and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the middle color in the second column. Soft airbrush at a fairly large size, around about sort of 32%. I'm just gonna tap in the middle of the screen to create an orb. You can leave it like this. I quite like this effect where you've got that backlighting. We can go ahead and Increase the size of this just up a tiny bit up to about sort of this size and that will just nicely bring out the shape of it And we can add a reflection underneath if you wish So what we can do is we can go ahead and we can select all of our layers swiping from left to right including that glow that we just created Everything from top to bottom Grab your cursor and just move that up just a bit more just move it up a little bit more towards the top So we've got a little bit of a space for a reflection We'll tap on our cursor when we're done. 
Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab every layer but the glow in the background. So we're going to go ahead and turn that layer off. We're going to turn off our background color. You should see this. And then we're going to swipe with three fingers down and go to the option of copy all. If we swipe with three fingers down again and go to paste, it would have pasted in, if we go to our layers, a new layer called inserted image, which has everything that it could see on the screen at that point. If we bring back in the glow and we bring in the background color, we'll grab our orb that we created as well. We'll swipe that to the left and duplicate it. We'll grab our cursor and we're gonna go ahead and just bring the orb down to this sort of area here, as if the lighting is coming straight down onto the floor in front of us. And we can go ahead and use the freeform option and flatten that orb down and make it a bit more of an oval shape, a little something like this. Make sure you hit the center point, which I know is these blue lines as well. And we can then go ahead and go to our layer. We can just bring the opacity down of that just a smidge more down to about sort of 75%. And then the inserted star that we created above, we can go to our cursor. We can flip it vertically. We can go ahead and drag that down. And we can make sure that if we hit the orange line in the center, we've nicely moved it all the way down. And what we can also do is we can use the freeform option just to flatten it. And we can even grab distort if you want to. And you can just bring this arrow out here on the right a bit more. So this point, and we'll do the same over here. So it pretty much goes to the edge of the canvas almost. That would just stretch that out a bit more. We can then tap on our cursor when we're done. We can then grab it again if we need to, just like I do, just to make sure it is nicely aligned to the bottom of the feet there. And we can go to our eraser, making sure it's set to the soft airbrush still. And maybe a brush size of about 15%. We can just blend that out at the bottom. Just blend it out, fade it out right at the very bottom of our canvas. Just really get rid of it, blend that out nicely. And you can even go to the layer, change the blend mode from normal. We can change it to the option of color dodge. And we can bring that opacity down just a little bit more, down to about sort of 50%. And you should end up with this really cool reflection in the floor. If I go up to my actions, turn off my drawing guide, and we go ahead and zoom in a little bit, and we go full screen with four fingers, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, please be sure to tag me in your creations over on Instagram and you can come and share your work with me over on Discord. As always, a massive shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. If you wanna get your name featured in videos, get access to a catalog of over 70 tutorials where three more are added every single month, sneak peeks, early access, and much, much more. Hit the link in the description down below. And if you enjoyed this tutorial here on YouTube, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.